Hey, 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 welcome back. This is Matt, pronouns he, him. And today we're gonna close out our Fire Store app with some cool Fire Store functions. And particularly we're gonna talk about three of some of the many features they have, uh, listeners, um, querying, and batched writes. I think not in that order though. But we're gonna start with listeners. The first thing I'm gonna say is uh, it would be much more convenient if instead of having to manually regenerate our to-dos every single time we do all of this, we could just you know automatically regenerate them and have Firebase somehow tell us where things have changed. Uh, luckily, we can do exactly that with listeners. And so listeners are a concept that you'll see all the time in servers and back and stuff. And basically they listen for a change and then do something else. The way that Firestore calls this is a snapshot or an on snapshot function. So I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom here where we had this regenerate to do's line. I'm gonna instead replace it with this code. Let me quickly tell you what this code does and we'll do a few other things. So what this code does is says, okay, db.collections to do's, this should be pretty standard. We're taking a reference to the to do's collection. Then we have this on snapshot. On snapshot takes in a function. So this is something new to JavaScript or very common in JavaScript, but it might be new to you if you uh, haven't really used other languages that do this. Um, but this function that we pass in is gonna get called again and again. And we've already done something like this before using dot then, if that makes any sense. Uh, similar to when we use dot get, this snapshot is the entire list of everything inside our to-do list. And if you notice, the rest of this code is the exact same as what we did on our dot get. We map, each of the uh, documents in our document to some data structure that means it can get rendered to the screen here super easily. And then we just generate the to-dos and, and make the stuff show up on the screen. Um, so this was super, super easy. The only new line that we really had to add was this, this on snapshot. Once this happens, we can actually delete every single reference to regenerate to-dos. So I'm gonna delete this line, which we added in the previous video. I'm gonna delete this entire function. We don't need it anymore, right? I'm gonna delete this and we'll get back to fixing those buttons in a moment. We'll delete this and we'll delete this. And the reason why is because now we don't care. We don't have to manually regenerate the to-dos because we know our listener is gonna do this. So listeners like these can really simplify your code and make it really easy for you um, to write like less code and, and you know focus on making your app. If we refresh our page, we'll notice that it still works properly. And here's the really cool part. If you open another tab, so you have two copies of your to-do list open. I can type in something here, right? Like finish math homework. And then once I make it, it's gonna show up in the other tab. And you can test this with a friend too. If you have two friends using the same app on different computers, it's gonna work. And similarly, if we take a look at our Firestore dashboard and I write here, you know, finish CS homework too. I hit enter, we're gonna see that document get created live. So this is one of the huge powers of listeners. We can update our app when events happen even outside of the app itself. Cool, so hopefully that wasn't too confusing. As a quick reminder, all we did was we replaced all instances of regenerate to-do and we made this one call right here that takes a to-do collection, adds a snapshot function, and the snapshot function just gets the documents and maps them to their data. So nothing too complicated, I hope. Okay, the last things we need to do to make sure this works properly as an app are these two buttons, this delete all and this done all problem. I'm gonna start with not all or delete all, and then we'll come back to done in a moment. So let me present you maybe a micro problem that we might have, right? Um, when we hit the delete all problem, we're gonna to have to send maybe a bunch of delete requests, right? Delete this one, delete this one, delete this one. That seems kind of inefficient, you know? Like you're sending maybe a hundred requests if they have a hundred to do's. Uh, but beyond that, there are actually some distributed systems problems in play. And for our to-do list, this is pretty low stakes. It's not a huge deal. But with more mission critical applications, it's really important. In particular, what happens if one of the to-dos gets updated in between the to-do like giant slog of requests, right? What happens if in the process of deleting a to-do, um, a to-do already gets deleted, right? Uh, how do we kind of deal with these problems? Firestore has one solution, which is called a batched write. And a batched write basically lets you queue up a bunch of actions together, as long as they're all writes. And a, a delete is technically a write, just kind of let you know. And then do them all at once or none at all. And this, if you're familiar with databases and distributed systems, is a really, really common paradigm. If you aren't, that's totally okay. You don't have to read a textbook uh, to use these kinds of things, but I am gonna show you what this looks like in code. And this is often what you should do 
for large groups of actions that you do together or actions that depend on something else. So this is the code that I've copy pasted. It. Again, it's in the notes. And first, we're just going to create this thing called db.batch. This just says we're going to create this batch request. Then we do two sets of things. First, we do this dot get. You should remember this dot get from the first video that we did um, using these five star functions. So here we're just going to get every single item inside the to do collection. Then uh, for every for each document in docs, that's what for each here means. We're going to execute this thing and we're going to say, hey, let's do batch dot delete. So dot delete is just like the previous dot delete you'd expect. We get this kind of monstrosity. This just basically means give us a reference to this document with the correct ID. So this dot delete works exactly like the dot delete we chained to doc over here, but it's sent to a batch instead. Once all of this is done, so we've for every single document in the collection, we've started, we've run this batch dot delete command. None of these things have actually been deleted yet. This just means we're queuing them up and getting ready to delete. In order to actually do the deleting, we have to do batch.commit, which you see right here. And you notice I chained a few dot thens together. That's totally okay in, in JavaScript. So it's like, do this thing, then do this thing, then do this thing. And then here we say batch.commit. And this batch.commit means actually, let's do all of these things at once. These two dot catches are just errors. So don't really worry about the error handling for now. And if we save this and reload it, we'll notice hitting not all works as intended and this thing becomes empty. So this is a really powerful tool. I definitely would recommend using batched writes in situations where you are making a bunch of requests at once, or like in this case, um, what we delete depends on what we get. Okay, cool. The last thing we're gonna talk about then is figuring out this done all button. And there are actually many different ways you can implement done all, but for the sake of introducing this new topic, I'm gonna say, let's do uh, something special. I want to first get all of the to-dos that are not done. Then I'm going to flip them all to done. And then we're going to do them all at once with the batch right again. And so this is kind of the code that we're going to use. I'm going to, again, copy paste this from the notes. So take a look at those if you want to. I'm going to leave it up on the screen, obviously. Now let's walk through what's going on here. And I'll point out the one actual new line that we're doing. So first, we're creating a batch. This is the same as the not all thing. Then we're doing db.collections to do's, this is the same thing. And then, whoa, we have this new line. This is the only new line um, where we're doing dot where complete equals false. So what's going on here? Dot where is what we call a query operator. And it's, uh, it uses where because where is like a simpler English word, I think. But basically, if you read it out naturally, you're saying, hey, get everything from the to do's collection where complete is equal to false. So in other words, this is kind of like a filter. When this next line, the dot get runs, we're only going to get documents in to do that fulfill this condition. And this is a very simple condition, but you can imagine that there are many other conditions you'd use in your app. Maybe you want to only load the tweets that were tweeted today, or you only want to load Instagram posts that have a certain hashtag. You can do all sorts of simple and complex queries, but for this example, we're just going to take a super simple one. And this stuff is the same that we've done everywhere else. We're going to get all those documents, then with that snapshot, for every single one, we're going to add it, uh, get a reference to our to-do and add it to our batch. Here, instead of using batch.delete like we did in the previous one, we're going to use .update. This is the same thing as the previous update we did in the last video. And we're just going to set complete to be true. And remember, uh, this only changes complete. This doesn't change anything else. Once all of this is done, we then commit the batch. So we like run the actual uh, request. And then we have some error handling. So uh, let's try this out. If I type in never gonna give you up, we can hit done all and that works. And all of this stuff, you know, works as intended. And again, I'll point out if you have another copy of the, the to do list and we hit done all here, you'll see the changes reflected here too. That's all thanks to our listener. Okay, cool. So that was a bit of a speed run of some more cool five store features. But between those three listeners, batched writes, and uh, queries, you can now start to really, really perform uh, and create complex web applications and data relations. Of course, there's much more you can do with Firestore. In the notes, I've linked some extra functionalities I think you should check out, especially if you're creating something complicated like a social media app, for example. And I also linked to some other cool things that Firebase does that can make your life easier too. Um, and you can kind of check out their documentation if you're interested. The last thing I'll just mention before we close out this video 
is uh, if you are using React or if you're following along with my React workshop too, I've recorded a bonus content video that tells you how to combine React and Firebase. So that's, con yeah, that's pretty convenient. You can check that out. I think it's the video right after this one. But yeah, that's it. Thank you for uh, taking uh, this, your time out of your day to come on this Firestore journey with me. Hopefully all of this made sense. If any of this didn't make sense, you have a lot of options available. Feel free to check out the checkpoint code or the written notes, which you can find somewhere here. Um, in addition, you can always send me an email and during the hackathon, you can reach out to any of our mentors. Quite a few of them have experience with Firestore and Firebase before, so we'd be more than glad to help you out. But that's it for me. Hopefully this helped out a lot and I'm really excited to see what all of you are gonna make at Career Hacks 2021. So see you soon.